This is a video on section 4 to 5 of Schraffer, Production of Commodities by Means of Commodities. So in these sections, Schraffer is starting to talk about a society in which there's a surplus produced. So it's producing more than it actually requires in order just for simple reproduction. The first thing I want to say is the way that I did the input-output tables in the last videos, I did them just in the same form as the sums in Schraffer's book. But what that does is that... Uh, reverses the uh, conventional order of the inputs and outputs of a Leontief input-output table. So from now on I'm just going to do it the correct way. Um, so these are the inputs just here and these are the outputs just here. So if you're doing the sum, as it is in the book, it's an input of 280 wheat to the wheat industry and 12 units of iron to the wheat industry and in this society they're gonna that totals 575 wheat that they're gonna output over here and here the inputs are 120 wheat to the iron industry eight units of iron to the iron industry and they give out 20 units of iron so immediately you can see so over here the output of 20 units of iron that that adds up over here you see actually you're totaling 400 wheat not 575 wheat as as Schraff is saying so you can see that here this table isn't it's not adding up correctly you've got 175 wheat that are surplus and the very first thing you need to do is figure out how this 175 wheat is going to be distributed between the wheat and the iron industry like who's going to get more who's going to get less there's many different patterns of distribution you could imagine the wheat industry could get all of it for example or they could get half and half or they could distribute it according to their labor input over here the way that Schreffer says that it it must be done is based on an equal profit rate over the amount of inputs that they have. So for each unit of input, you should get the same profit rate for each unit of input that you that they're inputting into, into the commodity production. That's quite a common idea in classical political economy. The idea is, is basically, suppose you were gonna divide it equally half and half this 175 between the wheat and the iron industry. Well now, the iron industry has a lower cost. You can already see this, even though the prices aren't here, because they're, they're inputting less of each type of, of um, capital input. They're inputting less labour and less capital. So then they're going to have a higher profit rate at the end if, if they were to divide them equally. And if, if this industry suddenly has a very high profit rate, What's going to happen is like lots of businesses are going to see that high profit rate. They're going to come into this industry uh, and they're going to increase the, the, these totals here. And so the profit rate will come down until it meets the same profit rate as per unit of input as this industry. And so the profit rate should equalize across sectors due to a, a, a form of arbitrage that, that goes on between the different, the different sectors sectors of, of, of capitalists. Whether that actually happens is up for debate. Um, the, uh, the evidence is not necessarily in the favour of, of um, this equalisation of profit rates. So um, I wouldn't take this as, as, as given when you're, you're reading Schrapper, but it's the one that Schrapper uses, so we'll also do it here. So let's start by like making the sum up as Schraffer does. So it's going to be 280. I'm going to leave the wheat off because I'm going to use the wheat as the standard commodity here. Again, it doesn't really matter which one you use. Either is fine. So plus 12 iron. And then we have this whole total. And we times it by the profit rate. And then we get 575 wheat and then the second line we have 120 again leave off the wheat plus 8 iron 
and then times that by 1 plus r which is the profit rate and we're going to get 20 iron so we take away the wheat from there as well because it's it's just one now Shafi says the, the problem here is um, so these these are measured in in different units this is measured in wheat and this is measured in in iron so because these are not the same units we we don't yet know like what the total inputs to production are and we need to know the total units of production to know what the the profit rate is because um, we need these to these two to be in the same form of unit in order to know what the profit rate is going to be but we don't know the profit rate until after we know the prices but we also can't know the prices until we know the profit rate because we don't know how much this and this are going to exchange for because this is going to have some units of wheat that are going to be added on this 120 plus the surplus is going to exchange for the 12 iron in the iron industry because those extra surplus wheats have to get to the iron industry so as you can see we've got two moving parts we've got the variable iron we need to know how much the price of iron is we need to know how much the price of uh, the profit rate is and we need to know both at the same time we can't know one before the other um, now we can see that there's two equations here there's two unknowns so the uh, this system of equations is possible to solve but I actually don't know how to do the the actual algebra for this I I understand how you work it out on a graph and I get uh, I'm going to show you the graphing software that you can get on the internet but first I'm gonna just work through Schaffer's example so that it's clear so Schaffer says that iron uh, so there's 15 wheat to every iron so we need to times 12 by 15 in order to get this unit price in the same unit price as wheat and here the rate of profit is 25 percent so it's going to be 1 plus 0 0.25 so if we do this down here 280 plus 12 times 15 is 180 and that totals 460 and then times by 1.25 so if we times 460 by 1.25 we get 575 so that's correct and then if we do the second line it's 120 plus 8 times 15 is uh, 120 so 240 that totals and then times by 1.25 equals 300 so these these ones here these are the the total prices of the inputs this is the total profit rate so um, in this uh, sector hold on let me just get my calculator 575 minus 460 so here these people are getting 115 wheat as the surplus and over here uh, the iron industry is getting uh, 60 wheat as surplus and then we can just check that this is correct so 300 wheat should be 20 iron and if we divide 300 by 15 300 divided by 15 equals 20 so we can see that that checks out and this is all what Schaff is saying in the book as well he says that the it's 60 wheat surplus in the iron industry this 180 here ex exchanges for so 12 iron is 180 is the the wheat that they get so the site that I was using before HackMath it doesn't allow you to, to to graph it out if you have more than two lines of equations you're not going to be able to graph it anyway but you need a little bit more advanced algebra calculator to do it the one that I'm using is from a site called Wolfram Alpha 
I'm gonna put the link in the in the description of the video again. But because so this is only two equations, so we can graph it. So you can see roughly what would be happening anyway if you had a three-dimensional di graph for the other one. So one of these lines here, um, the blue line is, let's see, this equation, and the purple line is this equation. And so what it does is it graphs out, if i is 1, what's r? If i is 2, what's r? If i is 3, what's r? And then it does the same for for um, this equation, if i is 1, what's r? If i is 2, what's r? And then you come, you end up with two lines, one here and one here. In these places where the lines intersect, they're possible solutions to the problem. And so here you've got the solutions over here. Now the reason that we use this solution, where i is 15 and r is uh, 0.25, that's because here this one is a zero is a minus it's a negative number. Obviously, in our society, we don't have negative prices. It doesn't make any sense. So, like this is not a possible solution given the society that we have. Uh, the only possible solution is is this one, where i is fifteen and and uh, this is zero point two five. 